So hi, everyone. Thanks for joining for another GitOps Days community spe special. Uh, I'm Stacy Potter, a community manager here at WeWorks. And today I'm joined by my teammate, Lee Kapili, who is a developer experience engineer who will be walking us through uh, Flux V2 on Azure. Hey, everyone. So just a quick note, we have a couple of um, upcoming events that we are sponsoring and uh, co-hosting. Uh, the GitOps Con, which is a KubeCon uh, co-located event, uh, happens on May 3rd. The CFP is open for that one right now. So go ahead and find that and submit a talk if you have a nice GitOps talk that you want to share with everyone. Um, and then while you're at it, go ahead and head over to GitOpsDays.com and submit the CFP there as well. <laughs> uh, the the GitOps Days conference is going to happen June 9th and 10th, so we got a little bit of time before that happens. So if you've joined us in the past few weeks slash months, um, you know that we've been doing these talks every two weeks or so um, for the Flux community. And hopefully you're all aware that Flux V2 is um, the team's really been heads down working on that and it is getting closer to GA every day. Um, but we really wanted to do these sessions all the time to give the Flux community um, some sneak peeks into Flux V2 and maybe some deep dives on uh, you know, the more powerful capabilities that, that, uh, that we're able to offer with, uh, with Flux V2. So there's still more for, for us to do and to cover. So we'll continue to host these uh, every couple of weeks or so. Before we get started, a uh, quick note to find, if you find yourself stuck or um, you just wanna connect with us, this, these are a few ways that you can get in touch. So check out the docs uh, at toolkit.fluxcd.io. Um, GitHub discussions, there's a Q&A uh, section there that we're trying to direct folks to. If you have any questions at all, um, please go there to try and find some answers. And of course, you can always find us on the CNCF Slack uh, Flux channel. A little bit of background on the company that Lee and I work for. We are called Weaveworks. Hopefully, if you know us, you know us from so much of the uh, open source work that we that we have done and continue to do. Uh, today, we're featuring Flux, which is in the CNCF as a um, now an incubating project, actually. Um, but we. Uh, we have other projects like Flagger, which is now also in the CNCF as an incubating project because it lives under the uh, Flux umbrella. Um, Cortex is uh, distributed long-term storage uh, for you know, really enhancing Prometheus. Uh, Weave Ignite and EKS Cuddle, uh, and many more. If you wanna check us out um, online, our website is weave.works, or you can uh, check out our repos on GitHub. And just a quick um, housekeeping note. I know everyone's probably really familiar with Zoom, uh, but just to let you know, we do host these for, they're probably around 45 minutes, I would say. And sometimes they go a little bit longer. Um, we'll try and get to questions as Lee goes through his presentation, um, but we definitely have a hard stop at the top of the hour. So we won't go any longer than that. Um, and if we don't get to all your questions, we'll try and follow up in uh, email, so. Hopefully we have we have your information there to do the follow up. Um, the only other thing to mention here re regarding housekeeping items is if you have a question at any time, if you can change the in the chat when you type your question and just change the two uh, to panelists and attendees versus just panelists. That way, everyone on the call can see your question. So just uh, if you're new here, and uh, we always like to give an overview on what is GitOps. Uh, so just some basics, uh, as the name indicates, it's Git plus ops, or sometimes we like to say operations by pull request, um, where you have a repo as your single source of truth. Uh, it's not just app dev or just operations, but really a methodology that crosses all areas. We talk about GitOpsing all the things. And the business value that comes with that are reliability, velocity and security benefits. It's also a paradigm or a method, methodology. It's not one single tool or technology. Of course, we're very excited about our Flux project and we work really hard to get it to a place where we've already brought GitOps value, but we're thinking about the vision of the most powerful way we can think about GitOps in the coming years and hopefully decades. And we really do feel that 
if you're using Kubernetes, you can still do, um, if you're not using Kubernetes, you can still do GitOps. But if you are using Kubernetes, it's really part of the evolution uh, of Kubernetes, leveraging the Kubernetes API and what that brings, and is really the next stage and way of leveraging the benefits of that technology. So uh, if you want to know more about uh, what is GitOps, we have some playlists on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash C slash Weaveworks Inc. Um, we have some talks from our last GitOps days that are, you know, really high level, what is GitOps that are, that are pretty cool, you can go check out. Um, so the principles of GitOps, I'll run through these pretty quickly. Not everybody has all four principles. So really anywhere you start is a great way to get started on your journey. Whether you're using Git as your versioning system or not, the important thing is that you're using a versioning system. Other core principles are that you have a declarative system and that you have a way uh, in which changes are automatically applied to that system. And then at the end, you have ways of reconciling and ensuring that you have correctness uh, and alerts with that. So that is a quick and dirty overview of the four principles of GitOps. Um, and as I mentioned before, you can go and check out some more um, GitOps Days talks from our previous events or just join us in June as well. Um, so with that, I think, yeah, that's a quick intro for me, Lee. So I can turn it over to you now. Stop my share. Hey, friends. <laughs> So I'm still in the middle of a little bit of demo prep. It's hoping to be further along so I could start by showing you a full platform of Flux2 stood up on Azure already working. But I'm only about 70% of the way there. So we are going to get to start this uh, off with a little bit of explanation of what we're doing and then like iterating towards a fully working a uh, set of infrastructure as code that's been deployed into Azure, as well as the GitOps bootstrap with Flux on top of an AKS cluster integrated with other Azure services. The big point here that we want to drive home is that the Flux project is open and extensible in a Kubernetes native way, which means that when you're using a managed Kubernetes service, alongside all of the other cloud native interfaces that you find commonly across uh, various infrastructure providers, be it Azure, Google's GCP or AWS, or a smaller cloud. If you've got your own infrastructure as a service uh, for your private deployments, or you have like say a bucket storage implementation in your data center, Flux is extensible, it's open. And we've found some of the most uh, interesting support challenges uh, in making sure that we've got first class interfaces available for a large community of Azure users uh, that are adopting Flux 2, moving away from Flux 1 and that sort of sort of thing. So uh, very excited to be playing with Flux on Azure with all of you today. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, we'll start with a little bit of a screen share here. Uh, let's see, it's going to be this one. Here we are. And I'm going to drag a little bit of a slide in. We'll do a little bit of annotation. So when you install Flux, right, Flux is a series of many different Kubernetes controllers that each own an individual part of configuring your GitOps platform the way that you need it to be, right? So if you are interested in working with sources, right, then you use source controller, custom resources. And so we install these controllers inside of an AKS cluster inside of Azure. And you'll see later that we've created this AKS cluster with Terraform from the same control repo that we're intending to use with Flux. Uh, it's just a common pattern that people like to do. Now, we want to get those sources from somewhere. Typically, when we do a demo, the easiest path for the majority of users is that they've already got a GitHub organization. And Flux has amazing bootstrap support. It can configure your secrets management uh, granularly for individual repositories in GitHub by just using the Flux bootstrap command. But we also have a, oh, 
that's cluster app stuff. Where is the, uh, I'm using the same browser. I'd have to back out of this. Oh, where did it go? Sorry, friends, I lost my tab already. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. But when we have clear annotations, sorry, I'm like fumbling now with my uh, annotation setup. Where is the, oh, here it is. Okay, clear. There we go. I promise I know how to use Zoom. So back to what I was saying, right? We've got source controller and normally you'd point it to GitHub. But if you want to use something that we don't support uh, for the Flux Bootstrap uh, workflow, then you can go uh, either to directly to our use cases Azure section or to guides and installation. And there is a generic Git server setup. Now, this is what you can do to get set up with an Azure DevOps Git repository. And you can see we've got a special section for things you need to look out for, right? Uh, you can also get there from our use cases page on Azure specifically. Go to Flux installation with Azure DevOps repos. Right? So we'll be showing a little bit of what that bootstrap looks like in just a moment. Now, that's just source control. There are other integrations that you might be interested in working with. So some people like to do secrets management using encrypted files that are safely committed to their Git repositories. The thought being that somewhere, something has a privileged decryption key that can then deploy those secrets. In this case, the component inside of Flux that does that is Customized Controller. Customized Controller can integrate with Azure Key Vault using our supported library usage of SOPS. So SOPS is a project by Mozilla that allows you to have a very terrific workflow for encrypting and decrypting sensitive files with multiple key backends. You can even do offline key storage with GPG and have multiple cloud backends, like if your secrets are super important uh, and you can't like regenerate them or something. So super mature solution here, Flux can be the customized controller inside of Flux can be extended using SOPS and an integration with Azure Key Vault. And go back to our annotation thingy. Oh, that is a CFP review. I'm struggling today with my window manager. And this thing keeps floating. There we go. Clear. All right. Lastly, We've got some integrations that are possible down here, uh, specifically with the image reflector controller. Uh, and here we've listed image repo because that's the object that's inside the cluster gets, that gets kind of um, operated on. Uh, similarly, this is called image automation controller. It works on image update automations. Right? So these are, there are individual custom resources that you can use in a Kubernetes native way inside of Flux. And then those controllers can integrate uh, with a standard OCI registry. But cloud providers sometimes have interesting authentication methods when you are working with a container registry. Similarly, say you wanted to uh, pull in a Helm repository so that Helm controller could do a release from an OCI chart support coming in the future uh, that's currently not supported yet because it's not GA, uh, or from a currently deprecated feature inside of Azure Container Registry that can host Helm charts inside of a chart museum style repository. Well, that integration is also available. You could authorize source controller to be able to pull charts from ACR, and you can authorize image repo controller to monitor tag updates from an ACR. Um, so several different integrations, and you can tell there's, this is kind of complex, right? We're talking about four non-trivial pieces of infrastructure. These two things actually live inside of the Azure Compute APIs, and Azure DevOps is its own thing. 
And then like we've got managing all of these Kubernetes centric APIs, which are not part of the Azure service offering, right? The Kubernetes APIs themselves come from an upstream project. And so when we are talking about all these API objects, there's a lot to manage. Terraform is great for starting to wrangle around this problem. Uh, and that's what I'll be demoing today. Uh, in a similar vein, you could also use something like Cluster API, uh, which would lend itself to a very GitOps friendly solution, say if you were using a management cluster uh, to manage your AKS and keep all resources with something like Azure Services Operator or Services Controller, something like that. But today we're going to be using a little bit of Terraform. Cool. And I will. Oh, there's a question. Why is the Helm chart feature in ACR deprecated? Uh, I'm not an Azure representative, uh, but from what I can just see is happening in the community is that um, the teams at Azure who work on open source Helm are very large advocates for the OCI charts. Uh, so it's that classic, you're following edge technology, what we previously did we really don't want to do anymore. It's deprecated. And what's coming up is not really generally available yet, but please enable the flags and play with it. Uh, so OCI charts are not generally available yet. Uh, and they're not, uh, the SDK is not currently GA in a way that Flux could consume it yet. But uh, they want the ACR chart registry people to be moving off of that. So that's why that's marked as deprecated. Uh, but you still you still can technically use it if you have no other option and like need to store artifacts. Uh, that's currently the state of that right now. That's a good question. Um, cool. No other high level questions on like the architecture of all of the bits and pieces that we're going to be talking about and uh, attempting to demo today. Uh, so I'll be rolling into a little bit of Flux Bootstrap action on some uh, infrastructure that I stood up this morning. Uh, who doesn't love a little bit of live demo, right? We have a bit of a culture of doing that on the online user group. So let's get into it. I guess I can probably close that bit. We'll turn off my annotations. And trusty terminal. There we go. Okay. Uh, so what have we got here? There's a Terraform directory, and uh, I've got this these Azure DevOps resources commented out right now because I decided to just create my repository manually inside of the Azure DevOps UI. So let's start there. Um, in order to have a place to store my sources, I went into Azure DevOps, and I made a new project, which you just, you know, go to the Azure DevOps, um, like main page, here's the home page. You click new project and then you put your name in and everything. And a project in Azure DevOps has a couple of different tools available to you. Uh, the one that we're mainly interested in integrating with is repos. And then there's also pipelines, which is in a way similar to other CI solutions like GitHub Actions or Circle CI. Uh, pipelines is nice because you've got all of these Azure authentication bits in here so that you can integrate with other services. Um, and uh, so just a good base here for automation, which is why you find a lot of people using Azure DevOps when they are on Azure. Um, repos supports Git repositories. You can see that I've pushed the repo that I'm working off of uh, to the Azure DevOps remote. Um, and so, yeah, like the repo that we're looking at in here is also what we're looking at uh, up here in the cloud in Azure DevOps. And I've got a clusters folder that's holding our Terraform, as well as some other generated files. Let's look at those. So not managing Azure Dev DevOps with Terraform at the moment. Um, we just had one project, and I didn't have time for that. But if we uh, just looking at the providers list right now, what we've currently got loaded in is uh, the Azure Resource Manager. Uh, so this is a uh, upstream provider from Terraform. And then the next thing that we'll be looking at is this infrastructure Terraform file. 
So I've got the client loaded, which just has like my tenant ID and things like that. I'm making a resource group for my name, uh, just so that I don't step on my teammates. And then the next thing we have is an AKS cluster, right? So we've got some notes inside of the Azure guide. If you go to Azure and then you go to cluster creation, this is the Flux documentation, right? We have a recommendation on some creation options. Uh, so this is a very succinct way to do it. It's just a little bit of shell using the AZ command line tool. And we recommend the, you know, like this, these are things that we've tested to work, right? Previously, there have been issues with certain networking setups, although those have been resolved. So please contribute um, to the knowledge base if you are using a different networking setup. Um, this is a preview option that we will be circumventing with the Helm chart installation. And then uh, pod identity is important. Or sorry, managed identity is not in preview. Pod identity is in preview. And then we have the name of our cluster. So similarly, I've enabled some of these same options right on our AKS cluster in Terraform. Uh, and then there's this is just normal other AKS cluster stuff. That's that's my public key that I connect to with GitHub. Um, got three nodes here. So there's our cluster, right? We've also got a container registry, just a basic one with Weave DX. Uh, here's a key vault for me personally inside of the same resource group. And um, yeah, what else is here? This is kind of important. You're able to get and create keys, which are necessary for like Terraform to even do anything with this key vault. And then we have the encryption and decryption uh, capabilities uh, inside of the access policy enable. Right. So creating an Azure key vault with the proper access and then putting a key. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Uh, there's a key vault. And then this last bit here is an AKS ACR integration thing that you can optionally enable inside on your cluster. If you are OK with every single namespace in your cluster having access to pull images from your registry, then you can create a uh, role assignment that allows the kublet on every node to talk to your ACR uh, registry and pull images. Um, if you are not OK with every namespace in your cluster potentially being able to pull any image from any particular registry that you role bind to, then you would enable this and you would use a different integration that I could point you to that we maintain in the Flux project currently. Um, so yeah, that's the infrastructure, which basically lays out these four services, right? I made an Azure DevOps repo manually, and then we have some Terraform for AKS, Key Vault, and a container registry that's hooked up to the Kubernetes cluster. So far, there's nothing like Flux specific here. This is just very useful Terraform that we can check into Git and repeatedly create our infrastructure. Uh, good stuff. Now, if we go to the Flux Terraform, file, then what we'll have are a couple of new bits that we want to stack on top of the infrastructure to pave the way for Flux to have access to certain Azure services, uh, as well as for Terraform to provide some helpful hints for us to configure our repository properly, because there's really a hidden component here. When you're looking at this diagram, it shows you the infrastructure that's in the cloud and where your repository lives. But what you're not getting is the developer experience of what it's like to actually operate and collaborate on the code that lives inside this repository. And so there are certain platform features like this key vault. How can we help the developer? How can we configure the, the code properly, structure the repo in a way where when I'm using SOPs, this thing is actually able to decrypt it? We need to be using the same encryption key and decryption key pair, right? And so bridging the gap between creating these keys in Terraform, right, and then also configuring the repository in a proper way, uh, that's part of what we've solved here. 
So if we look at Cool. So if we look at the uh, flux terraform file, there is this map of managed identity names to their role assignments that I would like in Azure. I want a, a user available to sync resources and be those things need to be able to pull container images. Uh, in this case, it's so that we can read tags. And then the SOPS AKV decryptor, this is for decrypting values from the key vault. So it's a key vault crypto user. And then this is the Terraform that makes those uh, things happen. So there's a user managed identity, and then there's a role assignment that's created for those pairs. Um, these managed identities are going to be pulled into our Kubernetes cluster using a component called AAD pod identity. And uh, what that will do is it will allow workloads inside of our Kubernetes cluster, uh, be it customized controller or a registry sync credential controller to be able to pull in temporary tokens uh, that can be used to talk to the Azure API for those services. And then um, uh, not an uncommon pattern uh, for when things need to talk directly to like DNS or something in, in your cloud. Uh, it's, kind of like a constantly refreshing API key. And then we've got a key being created for our key vault, specifically for Flux, right? So we're all in the Flux Terraform integrations file here. And uh, that's an RSA 4096 encryption and decryption key. Uh, we just give it a nice name. And then we've got some outputs. And that's essentially the gist of all of the Terraform. You know, that's the providers, the infrastructure, the flux integration specific portion of it, and the complete lack of uh, infrared code for our Git repo management. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what those outputs are. Right, we've got an output called a SOPS YAML. Uh, it has our key ID in it, as well as some interesting um, path regex and stuff. And then we've got a managed identities output. And this looks an awful lot like a Kubernetes resource. It's got an API version and kind of metadata. So let's go look at what that kind of thing looks like. Um, where's our terminal? Here we go. So if I were to say, do a Terraform uh, plan, oh, need to go into the Terraform directory. And after a few seconds, we'll get a little bit of output from the Azure API uh, showing, based off of our declarative configuration, uh, what we would expect to happen if we were to apply this kind of thing, right? Uh, if you've never used Terraform, really cool. And uh, so you can see that there's no changes. Uh, if there are changes or something, then it shows you what would change in these outputs. But since there are no changes, there's nothing of note. But we do have a way. Uh, to look at what that output is just using the Terraform output command, right? So all of our infrastructure is already been applied into Azure. We've got a cluster, we have the key vault, we have the container registry, we have the key for Flux created. There's all of the uh, role bindings and things like that, the role assignments, excuse me. Um, and if we check our Terraform output, we have some recommendations about how to configure our repository. Uh, ignore this small typo but we'll fix that. And uh, so we've got a SOPS YAML. A SOPS YAML is a client-side configuration that helps you create secrets with the proper key. So we're definitely gonna put that into our repo so that people uh, have the easiest path towards creating encrypted secrets with our GitOps platform. Um, and then we've got a bunch of managed identities being printed out here. Uh, they are a bunch of Kubernetes YAML and they have client IDs and resource IDs. So these Azure identities are a custom resource that when we install the AAD pod identity add-on into our cluster, we'll have a CRD that enables this API. And then we can hook those up to the managed identities that are created in Azure. And the controllers on the nodes will then expose those identities to workloads um, granularly inside the cluster. 
So we'll be able to give pods those managed identities. Um, we'll do that with a namespace specific label. And uh, so there's those two things. And then I made just a little make file. Uh, you could do this inside of Terraform uh, using the local file resource, uh, but I just found this to be a little bit easier. Um, so we're just using this make file with these Terraform outputs and some simple bits of JQ uh, to output to the proper files in our directory. So after you run Terraform, if you have a successful apply, uh, then yeah, you can see I've commented this bit out. Uh, when you run make, it updates all the files, right? Very cool. So that points us to the proper Azure Key Vault key uh, for developers to be able to create encrypted secrets. Um, I guess just cop that back out. Uh, the next bit that we'll want to do that isn't included in the Terraform is to actually hook up our cluster to the Azure DevOps repository. Uh, so what I've done kind of ahead of time is I've started to prepare my Flux Bootstrap directory. Uh, so what we have here is a customization YAML that has the normal GOTK sync and GOTK components. Uh, this is the Flux installation and an empty Flux configuration currently. And then we've got the this patch, Customized Controller Azure. So in Customized Controller Azure, I just stole this from our documentation. Um, we've, we're taking the Customized Controller deployment from Flux system, and we're adding a label to any of the pods that come from that deployment template. Uh, and so this AAD pod binding label uh, with the way that we're going to deploy pod uh, AAD pod identity, this will grab a managed identity from the same namespace. Uh, there's a specific option to do that. And then we're also going to add an environment variable called Azure auth method. This is a SOPS specific thing uh, that just tells SOPS to use the MSI server on the local node. Um, and uh, in our case, it will be the local Kubernetes node because it gets uh, intercepted. So that's the configuration that needs to happen to make customized controller be able to talk to Azure Key Vault with the way that we have the integration. Um, there's currently no like per customization namespacing that we're able to do with Azure Auth right now. Um, and so that would be quite interesting uh, to accomplish. Um, I would be very keen on being able to use like a token sync or something uh, to then create an Auth sandbox uh, for each of the SOPS providers. Uh, but that's just not something that's proposed or even uh, being started to implement. Uh, the only sandbox provider I believe that we have right now in customized controller for decryption providers uh, is uh, for GPG. And I believe Hida is working on age. So um, sandboxing these providers can be, uh, it's just like an additional challenge on top of what SOPS gives you since it's intended to be used as a single workstation thing. Um, so we're working on that, but this is already a good way for you uh, to use a single encryption key or a single or several encryption keys for a single tenant uh, across an entire cluster with Azure Key Vault. Um, if you wanted something maybe more segmented, you could use GPG. Uh, you can put GPG keys into each namespace, and that would be a, a reasonable approach to that. Also, I believe the Azure team uh, would be keen on seeing other solutions with key vault syncing secrets into the cluster uh, at runtime. Uh, there's that. Um, so what we'll do, let's get everything kind of hooked up and then I'll explain uh, the order of installation that we're going to be using Flux's dependency features to stand up the cluster with. Uh, here we are, where is, OK. 
Okay. So here we're going to create a source inside of Flux system for our Git repository. Uh, and this is an important flag in particular. Just making sure we don't have too many questions. Cool. Uh, uh, Don, your question about is the repo going to be publicly available? Check my GitHub. It's up there. It's called AZ Flux 2. Um, I'm updating it as we, you know, during this demo as we speak. But uh, yeah. So here, this, this flag, when you're working with Azure DevOps in particular, is very important because Azure DevOps only supports Git Protocol 2. Uh, and so you'll need to change the Git backend uh, that Flux uses to fetch the repo. And then uh, you also need to make sure that any deploy keys that you generate are going to be RSA keys, uh, because elliptic keys are not currently supported with Azure DevOps. Um, and then here we've got our um, clone URL, I think. What's my remote? Here are the remotes, if you're curious. We weave AZ Flux, AZ Flux 2. Cool. Yes, we'll just copy that. That should be good there. Uh, and I am on the main branch uh, is how I set up the repository. Uh, so I'm going to create the source imperatively using the Flux command line tool into the AKS cluster. Right? So just modifying the cluster directly. And it's telling me when I created the source uh, that it wants to put this SSH key into my cluster. So it's generated a, a one-time deploy key for me. I'll go ahead and copy that key. And let's talk about auth for a second. So with Azure DevOps, um, there is no such thing as a deploy key in the way that we might think about things uh, with GitLab, Bitbucket, or GitHub. Um, all keys belong to users. And so what I'll just do in this case is add that key. Um, and we'll say that this is the Flux Box cluster deploy key. Okay. Uh, we'll add that and it has uh, whatever permissions my entire user has to that repository, right? So like it's it's a read write key. Um, if you want more granular access, you can create a personal access token. Uh, the team at Zenit also has a project called Asdo Proxy, uh, which you are able to put in front of Azure DevOps, uh, like you can deploy it inside your cluster and use it as a service uh, to create a more multi-tenant access method. Um, and there's also the practice of creating machine user or administrator bot accounts uh, where you would say use an email alias or, or like Gmail group or something to uh, sign up uh, with a separate user inside of Azure DevOps. Uh, and then that user, you know, you just it's not a real person, but you can, it can have credentials, uh, passwords, SSH keys, and access tokens of all sorts. Uh, so there's that kind of thing going on. Uh, I have added the deploy key to my repo. So uh, the CLI adds the source to the cluster, and we can see that source controllers picked it up and pulled the uh, latest revision. Cool. All right, so everything's there. Uh, now we will need to be creating a customization. Customization box system. Do I have one of these already in my history? Perhaps. Yep. Cool. So I want to create a customization um, for flux system. And the path is going to be uh, basically almost that, but then I should probably go up to the root of the repository so I don't get it wrong. No, no, I've made a mistake. I copied and pasted something and messed it up, cool. Clusters, stealthy box, 
flux boot, and then anything in this directory uh, is going to get synced to the cluster. The source that we will pull that from will be flux system. Uh, and what else should we do? Let's uh, turn on client validation. And we don't need to override the namespace or anything. We don't have health checks. Uh, this is not where we'll configure any decryption. Yeah, this should be pretty good. Cool. And path not found. I messed it up, friends. Apparently, that path is not found in my repository. Sure seems like it's there. Ah, uh, I didn't commit it. Okay. That would be why. Um, so let's go back into our ladder. So I'm in my cluster control directory and I'll get rid of the arm stuff. We don't need that at the moment. Cool. So what we'll be adding to the repository here that will, as soon as it, as source controller notices it, customized controller will apply all of these things to the cluster. Uh, is a myriad of manifests. So uh, I have inside of the flux bootstrap directory, there is this AAD pod identity sync that I've completely not tested. Um, we also have a patch uh, to the GOTK components YAML. Uh, so we'll also see if that applies. That's going to modify the way that customized controller behaves. Um, and then we have uh, managed identities. So this is a directory that contains a bunch of Azure identity resources uh, necessary for AAD pod identity. Uh, we're going to want that to roll out properly as well. And then what else have we? We've got uh, an install of pod info that we can use for some demonstration and our library directory, which holds a Helm installation of the AAD pod identity. So let's go ahead and look at some of these things. I'll commit them first. Sign my commits. We'll push that up to Azure DevOps main branch. Might as well push it up to GitHub too. Fail in public, right? All right. Um, so here's the explanation of what I hope will occur. The AAD pod identity sync. This is inside of our Flux Bootstrap directory, and it is a another customization syncing a different directory than the bootstrap directory. This is a pattern that I've used a lot in the demos before. Um, if this is a new idea, uh, first time you've maybe seen some uh, dependency management happening inside of Flux, uh, basically we are using a directory that's already been applied uh, to apply a new directory. Uh, and this starts to create a tree of things that only are created when their parents resources, you know, are also applied. Uh, and this helps you get around validation errors like custom resources not being installed and that sort of thing. Um, so we want to sync the pod identity path. Uh, it just comes from the same repository. Oh, there's a depends on. Yeah, see, that's already not going to work. So let's just fix that. And managed identities, this needs to depend on what finished editing this. Oh, that's also an issue there. We are fraught with problems. I, I may have just royally messed things up because I almost overwrote the flux system cost customization. I don't think that there's a way to uh, that there's any safeguards for that. It's okay. We'll fix it. Make sure it's the same. Okay. 
It should be fine now. We are fixing that. We're removing the depends on and then the managed identities. This is IDs. This is going to be the directory. Above us, it's the Azure identities. Cool. And we will depend on this one. So the reason for this dependency, friends, is that we cannot install these Azure identity resources that came from Terraform until the custom resource definition from the AAD pod identity add-on is available inside the cluster. I could do something brash, like disable client validation completely, uh, which eventually would succeed. Uh, but when we are bootstrapping our infrastructure, we want to create a story that's repeatable and error-free uh, and only mutates the cluster up to the point where things break. Right? We don't want to put a bunch of stuff in the cluster and then be in this mess where we can't tell what's broken. Uh, and so having the dependency graph of everything roll out from a single commit inside your repository, Flux's ability to do this is super valuable when, say, you're in a disaster recovery scenario or standing up new infrastructure for a new client or something like that. So um, we will fix um, basically what we're using here is the bootstrap directory will install pod identity. And then the managed IDs will only then be put in uh, once that is installed. Uh, and I don't have a health check uh, on AAD pod identity. Um, not like waiting for any component to stand up, but I just I want the CRD to be inside the cluster, and that will be quick enough to where it's not going to be problematic. Um, depends on AAD pod identity inside of the same namespace. Azure Identities, there's the name. Cool. Go into our directory, add flux. And then we will make sure that our customization that we made earlier for the bootstrap is still configured properly. We will reconcile the source uh, just to make sure that the most recent ref is up to date. There we are. Yep, looks good. And then um, uh, just look at the customization, see. Namespaces. Ah, I need to make a namespace for that. A little bit of GitOps action. AD pod identity NS. We will just put that into the lib folder actually. Kind. I have no autocomplete for that. The cookie will fly. Yeah, I suppose that's relatively 
uninspiring. Maybe that's why there's no autocomplete. Perfect. So I added a namespace to the library that installs pod identity. Uh, you'll notice that I used the word library because when you start to um, factor your GitOps repository uh, in a way that's friendly for collaboration, you get code-centric abstractions instead of Kubernetes-centric abstractions. And so while Flux doesn't force you into any one particular directory structure or dependency tree or way of working, whatever way is most natural for you to organize your code, your patterns and habits start to emerge. You'll see that I've done this in previous demos as well. And, and so you, you can decide how to organize your code independently of the structure of what namespaces and resources are inside of Kubernetes. And that ability to collaborate and structure and organize, document, version control, everything about your system is the value of GitOps. It's the things that Kubernetes doesn't take ownership of that it gives you on top of, right? Uh, so that's why, that's the big deal with GitOps. GitOps is not just a technology, it's a way of working with your team uh, and it's completely necessary in a complex environment or anytime you're just trying to keep track of what you've done. Um, let's add for AAB pod. Yeah. Push. And I don't have a webhook set up right now. So that's why I'm just running Flux Reconcile. Uh, you can do that with very low RBAC permissions. So you could give your developers access to do that without any other access to things inside the cluster. And then uh, we can look at our customizations. And we can see that uh, AAD pod identity has been applied to the cluster, but that managed IDs has currently uh, not been applied because the dependency is not yet ready, right? So uh, that's just using the flux get customizations command, which is similar to uh, kubectl get customization. Yeah. So you see very similar output, uh, just a kind of syntactic sugar. And um, what we're actually doing with AAD pod identity here is we have a Helm repository that's hooked up to uh, Azure's upstream Helm repository hosted on GitHub. And then uh, there is uh, this Helm release of the chart that's using a force namespace value. Um, so that's all that's going on there. Uh, nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, this value is what I was talking about when we were referencing that pod label from the Flux system customized controller patch for Azure, right? So this label uh, is ultimately the behavior gets changed based off of that uh, Azure value. Uh, Kingdon, you're mentioning that you might think that this path could be wrong. Uh, I think it might be correct because my cluster directory that's synchronizing is flux boot. So this, um, yeah, that is wrong. You're right. That should be from the root of the repository. Appreciate it. Good point. Uh, that's not a relative path. That should be the root of the repo, uh, which is going to be, I, I will just use my editor tooling. Copy relative path, paste. Now it won't be wrong. Um, you are absolutely right there. And then, yeah, this was lib. Good catch, Kingdon. Thank you. You're always uh, a savior on failed demos.
fixed Azure ID path. Push, I got style. Cool. And then if uh, that was successful, and we look at the Helm deployments, it looks like we had a successful deployment of AAD pod identity. And we uh, also just look at the customizations. Uh, we have the managed IDs applied now, now that we've fixed uh, that error that Kingdon so astutely noticed. And so we should be able to look at Azure identities across the cluster. We have a couple of those. Uh, I don't believe that they give you a, do they give you a good status? Those are inside of the Flux system namespace. They have a spec, but I'm not getting any status back on those objects. So I don't know if they've been like reconciled per se, but um, that'd be quite helpful. And then uh, the other thing that we'll kind of want to look at is just make sure that that patch for the customized controller actually worked. So I am going to look inside of Flux system at the deploy for customized controller. And if we look at the environment variables, you see we've got our Azure auth method, MSI, right here, as well as that label for AAD pod uh, binding to SOPS AKV decryptor. So that name inside of the same namespace matches name, name, name. This Azure identity resource SOPS AKV decryptor with this particular spec, client ID and resource ID. Uh, you'll notice that I'm using a manifest generation technique, uh, which Kingdon is working on a more full guide here. Uh, so Terraform, this make file, right, is using the Terraform outputs to actually produce those custom resources. So I didn't have to do any uh, like non-declarative or imperative flow uh, in order to get those client ID and resource IDs to actually be propagated into my cluster. Uh, important when you're thinking about bootstrapping many of these clusters, right? Um, to reduce the operator burden to get things correct. So uh, cool stuff there. At, at this point now, everything is wired up and we don't have enough time to actually show so much of the secrets decryption. Actually, can I do something quick here? I can. So let's just deploy the app. Um, this is going to be the app sync. And we will deploy the my app directory. Source ref, flux system, I need to change this. This will be my app. Customization, that looks right there. We don't necessarily depend on that, but that would be. Yeah, we'll just keep that. Okay. Add. Flux. You just get mint. Deploy our app. So if we've done things correctly, and I'll push that up to GitHub as well so that everyone can be following along um, in public with what the contents of the commits are as well. If we've done this right, then a reconcile of the source should produce a decrypted secret. If we look inside of the my app directory for pod info, I've got this SOPS encoded string data. There should be a password there with some secret value. And if I look at secrets, it's not there. I might have uh, messed something up. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, I messed it up. Oh, well. You're at time anyway. Yeah. So. Sorry, Don. Uh, this is not a simple example, by the way. This is a full platform integration with Azure. But we do have a lot of videos 
uh, on YouTube of simpler examples with kind that you can reproduce on your laptop in a few minutes. Um, and uh, Aaron, actually check out the third talk in our series. Uh, it's about uh, managing multiple environments as well as uh, some release workflow. Um, there's some good bits in there. Uh, so it's in the YouTube playlist, part three of Power of GitOps. And yeah, really the full story here is you can extend Flux uh, to do secrets decryption. You can extend Flux to synchronize credentials, um, be it you're on Azure or any other platform. Um, the Kubernetes native interfaces to do these things are very functional and have been thought through. And uh, there is just head over to the Azure use case page inside of the Flux guide uh, for a detailed um, or a detailed overview of this whole story, as well as deep links into our documentation of what exactly to do uh, with command examples and things like that. Uh, this repo is public and we will be pushing it as a Terraform guide very soon as well under this use cases section. So thanks so much for joining friends. And uh, as always, you know, we're available in the Slack channel to chat more about these examples. Awesome. Thanks everybody for attending. Thanks Lee. Appreciate it. Take care. We'll follow up with an email with all the uh, links and everything. See ya.